Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Wilhelm Scream and welcome back to another day in Destiny 2 for some more Destiny 2 news and Beyond Light Season of the Lost Intel. And in this video, I'm going to be taking you through this week's Grandmaster Nightfall, which is the Hollowed Layer Strike. It's the second time we've had this strike in rotation. And if you can complete it at the Grandmaster difficulty while also defeating all of the champions for a Platinum score, you will receive a guaranteed Adept Uzuma RR4 Sniper Rifle or Plug 1 Fusion Rifle. Of course, I'm going to be sharing with you all the cheeses and glitches that you can do in this strike, as well as possibly some that you can bring with you. The first little cheese that I would like to suggest is for the first mini boss room. This is where you fight the first fanatic. It's kind of a bottleneck in this room. You'll also get a couple of champions. I would suggest running to this little room off to the right side as you enter. No ads will spawn in here, and it's a really good spot. Very easy vantage point to take out the fanatic himself, as well as the champions that will eventually come up and over this sort of ramp bridge area. Maybe keep one player by the door and send two up into this room. You can run up there fairly quickly as you enter if you move fast enough without actually having to fight any of the adds. If you wait too long, they will start to spawn and sort of in close upon the door. So you don't want to stay there too long. Like I said, maybe keep one person at the door in sort of that previous room and you can sort of shoot in and out and send two people up this way. It's a really good spot and a lot of people don't know that it's there. The second section that I would like to discuss is of course the tank room and there's a couple of things that you can do in here. Number one would be the plate. Now a lot of people just stand on the plate until it's all the way down and it releases the tank. Don't do it this way. As you can sort of jump on and off the plate, I would suggest wait for the plate to get almost all the way down at least until you see the first wave of ads spawn in. This will not actually release the tank yet. A great thing about this is not only will you be able to kill that first wave of ads that would normally come in with the tank if you were to put the plate all the way down, but the door to the previous area will not close. So you can actually run back and finish off this first wave of ads, which includes champions outside of the room. It gives you a lot more cover and it also prevents you from having to fight champions as well as the tank. Once you finish off this wave of ads, then bring the plate all the way down, have the tank spawn in. And one thing I would suggest is once you take out one of the legs of the tank and he shields up, you can actually take out the tank shield with any super. So take out the tank shield and try to finish off the tank in one phase, because if you can, that will prevent any future ads from actually spawning in. Depending on how many phases you have to take to actually completely kill the tank, you will get more and more ads. But if you can do it in one phase, you will only have to fight these first phase of ads, which you can do from outside of the room and the tank itself. The next section is very much the same as far as we have two plates now instead of one, but we're going to use the same method that we did in the previous room. We're going to get on the plate until a group of ads spawn in and then get off so that we can actually kill that group before we complete the actual plate as 
I think you will get at least three phases of ads per plate. So this will allow you to control the ad spawning as well as just how many you're fighting at once a whole lot easier. I would also suggest for the majority of this fight to maybe do it in the back of the room because you can actually stand outside of this room in the hallway leading up into it. There's also a little cheese spot that you can use on the left side of the room by the left plate. You can crouch down in this one little spot and for the most part nothing can actually hit you here. Maybe just some of the totems if one gets spawned in but they're fairly easy to take out. Probably best used maybe for the um, actual boss kill rather than the ad control. But maybe keeping a couple players at the door and then maybe one in here will let you sort of play with how the aggro is working in this room because when you do stand by the door there is, um, well what happens on occasion is that the boss will actually move to one side of the room and you can't actually shoot him or at least it's hard to get really good crits on him. So sometimes if you can keep a person in a room or a space like this, the boss will actually stay more out in the open. For the actual boss boss room, this is the final boss room, there's a couple of spots that you're probably gonna wanna know about. This is actually a spot that I really like as it's sort of a head glitch. The boss can't actually shoot you here so long as you're standing on this little ramp with this little ledge in front of you. You can actually shoot over the ledge. It's fairly easy to get uh, headshots on the boss. Um, the only downside to this one area is once ads spawn in, you're a little bit exposed, but if you know when that's gonna happen and you're working well with teammates, uh, it's uh, a fairly easy spot to hold out so long as you know when to actually sort of move back to the other side of the room or get on ad control. This is another one of those spots where if you're doing it solo it's a good spot to do solo damage to the boss so long as there aren't ads or between ad phases. Um, once the boss actually goes back to his room where you can't do damage to them uh, and the ads spawn in along this side I would suggest to move to the back. Another thing to mention is when the boss actually does start to pull you, always be moving backwards. This will give you a little bit of extra time to do damage to him so you don't get pulled in and then stomped. Always make sure that you're trying to move wherever you are, make sure that you're always moving backwards, just strafe directly backwards. For some reason that will translate even into the pull, you'll get a little bit more time. And the final little glitch spot that I want to show is, again, for the boss room. If you jump onto this one ledge that is not very obvious, because it doesn't really look like a ledge, but you're actually on sort of this little circular edge here. Turn around and then jump up onto this pipe. This is probably most easily done on a warlock though I think it can be done on all classes. Jump onto this little ledge and then up and over onto this banner if you'd like and then onto this ledge. Now up here, you're pretty protected from all the ads. This is probably a good spot for um, help with, uh, or for helping your teammates when the actual ad waves spawn in. Also, the boss can't really hit you from up here, so long as you stay in cover. There's kind of an awkward spot where when you're in the back side of this, as you can see, it's kind of a V-shaped little ledge. You're actually not standing, you're just sort of floating. Um, then you can actually clamber up onto the actual ledge of it. That's not really where you want to be. You kind of want to be all the way in the back. 
it might take a little bit of practice to just get used to where you're um, really in danger because you can still get hit up here though it's less likely and where you're not I would actually suggest if you plan on using this spot which I do think can be very advantageous if done well maybe go into a normal hollowed layer strike and just practice doing it once or twice see where the boss can hit you where he can't and where the ads may or may not actually be able to do some damage to you with their AOE also make sure that you know that when you do get pulled no matter where you are you will still be able to get pulled towards the boss so get good at the actual jumping mechanic because once the boss pulls you you'll be pulled out of there so you want to make sure that you can get back up if that's what you're trying to do um, also activating a super can um, release you from the pull so if you are up there maybe when the boss does try to pull you down activate your super at that point it's really probably a best spot used for just controlling ads but that's going to be it for all the information in today's video hopefully you found something helpful good luck with your grandmaster or solo runs maybe you're just going for a 100k this week all these things can translate regardless of difficulty Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more Destiny 2 content. We're doing a giveaway at 55,000 subscribers. All you have to do to be entered into that giveaway is, as I said, like, comment, and subscribe, or follow me on Instagram or Twitter. They'll be linked in the description box down below. And for a extra entry into that giveaway for this video, you can leave a hashtag Beyond Light or a hashtag Season of the Lost or a hashtag Hollowed Lair in the comments section down below or a hashtag Witch Queen because the giveaway will be a Witch Queen Seasonal Pass Deluxe giveaway. Hopefully we reach 55,000 subscribers before that actually launches so the winner doesn't actually lose out or miss any time on any of the new content. Remember those hashtags stack between all videos, so if you haven't done that on a previous piece of content, it's not too late. You can always go back and do it again. And as always, once again, I am Wilhelm Scream. Of course, we will see you next time.